Hello, this is a message for um, those people who are subscribers to the David Icke YouTube channel. And I'm delighted to say we have now passed half a million. And without, I'm sure, the algorithms, uh, it would be a lot more. Because the number of people that stop me in the street all over the world and say they, they watch the uh, videos um, is incredible and uh, doesn't even begin to match the numbers that YouTube say um, I've seen them. So half a million subscribers on that basis is absolutely uh, amazing. But if you would like to um, sign up to our mailing list, then you'll get a lot more. You'll get a, uh, a newsletter of information and articles. Um, you will um, get uh, notification of events. You will be sent all the uh, videos that, um, that appear uh, based on my work every week. And there'll be uh, no things that um, relate to my books and, uh, and uh, other things that um, you'll be able to get um, money off uh, if you are a uh, subscriber. So um, if you uh, would like to subscribe, then just press the link that you see with this video and um, we'll take care of the rest. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Hello, and welcome to uh, Budapest in Hungary, a fantastic city. And um, I'm speaking here and then in Poland and uh, Amsterdam and then going all over Britain in the next few weeks, starting in Scotland, going down to uh, Wales, Cardiff, Swansea, and uh, talking also in places like Margate, Watford, and um, Colchester, and Crewe up in the northwest. And my goodness me, um, the information about how and to what end the world is really controlled, um, it's never been more urgent to get it out there and in circulation. Because um, what's happening is we're seeing what has happened in the shadows coming more and more to the surface as this manipulation of this global Orwellian state uh, is made manifest. It's been under the radar, being manipulated into place, and then, of course, at some point it had to break the surface where we could see it or society wouldn't change. And now we're well in that period where we're seeing it. And it may not seem uh, a massive example of that in terms of the events surrounding the Saudi dissident journalist Jamal Khashoggi and what very seriously appears to have happened to him in the Saudi Arabian consulate in Turkey. But it is in so many ways an encapsulation of how the world works. Because if we look at Saudi Arabia as a country, it was created by the British Empire uh, and not only did the the British authorities put the current House of Saud in ongoing unelected royal dictatorship power it also in league with the House of Saud and the United States created um, and in terms of the United States promoted and expanded the extreme uh, version of Islam known as Wahhabism and Wahhabism is basically the ISIS mentality which is why when you look at Saudi Arabia and ISIS the the common themes are all there not least in beheading people and 
imposing an iron will of extreme Islam upon those you control. And it's not really difficult, is it, to look at the way Saudi Arabia operates, it's, again, with its grotesque treatment of women, and you look at how ISIS operates in its areas that of control. And you would think there was a contradiction between the United States, Britain, etc., sending the, sending the troops in and the boys in the air to, quote, fight ISIS, and yet, at the same time, sell state-of-the-art weapons to Saudi Arabia to kill vast numbers of civilians and children in Yemen and cause a humanitarian catastrophe that is currently the biggest in the world with lives being taken all the time by the hunger and disease that the bombing has caused. You would think uh, in a so-called or real moral society that the condemnation of ISIS would be the same in terms of condemnation of Saudi Arabia, but no. They both operate the same, they both behave the same, but one is an ally of the West, pinch me, and the other is the enemy of the West, actually an ISIS proxy army of the West, if the truth be told. And this is the staggering, ongoing, centuries old and more hypocrisy, where politicians stand up and talk about Western values while um, doing far worse than those they condemn. And this is kind of being encapsulated now in the response to what has happened to the Saudi dissident journalist Yamal Khashoggi. Because first of all, he goes into the consulate in Turkey, in Istanbul, to get some papers necessary, in his eyes anyway, to marry his fiance, who's waiting outside. He doesn't come out. Hours and hours and hours pass, he doesn't come out. Now, the first story coming out of Saudi Arabia, led by this crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, who is the man that really runs Saudi Arabia. King Salman's just a puppet. That's why they call the crown prince Mr. Everything in Saudi Arabia, because he is. And of course, he's a man who has um, been brought up from birth in fantastic privilege and a sense of power over the population. And it's reached a point now where he uh, thinks he can do anything to anyone and get away with it. And he is, of course, um, not very bright either, which is a devastating combination of being a tyrant who's not the greatest intellect ever to walk um, planet Earth. And that combination can be seen in this situation with Jamal Khashoggi, because the first Saudi story was he left, there wasn't a problem. Well, that was obviously not true. His fiance's outside. He's got to go in there to get papers to marry her and then disappear for hours. Like where? To what end? Of course it was a nonsense. But you can, you can appreciate this idea that 
if you are a, an ultimate tyrant with total control of your country, you think you can just say anything and get away with it. Well, of course, there is a lot of people outside of Saudi Arabia who understandably didn't buy it. And now the story's changing and we're seeing, and this is a point, we're seeing at the moment, as I speak, it might change, of course, we're seeing Trump um, preparing the ground for, oh, it was just a, uh, a rogue group who killed him in the consulate. And therefore, no, the crown prince, the king, didn't know anything about it. So we're in the clear. Keep the weapons uh, being sold to Saudi Arabia. Keep the relationship. Keep the joint manipulation of the Middle East. Um, doubles all round. Uh, Pew, a hey, nothing to see here. What has kind of thrown a spanner in that works currently, whether it will turn out to be uh, true or not, we'll see, I can't say as I speak, is that a tape is alleged to exist which has the grotesque, if what is on the tape, uh, according to the uh, Turkish media, is true, the grotesque uh, murder and dismemberment of Khashoggi. We'll see how accurate that turns out to be. Trump has now asked for the tape. But the point is that Khashoggi and what happened to him is, is basically a, a side show to those in power, not just in America, but in Turkey too, and Saudi Arabia, because they now have this situation which could greatly damage um, relationships, certainly in the public mind, but of course the politicians who work to a different agenda and connections in the shadows, they, they want this to go away. They want business as usual. And I do hope that public pressure will not allow the carpet to be lifted and the, the garbage to be swept underneath in terms of this. Because lest we forget, Saudi Arabia is by any, by any criteria a fascist state ruled by supreme um, royal, fake royal leaders who run their country with beyond a rod of iron, who treat their women grotesquely and are running a tyranny of unspeakable proportions. And if the West, the moral West, is prepared to put up with that, and it is, of course, not only that, but to sell it state-of-the-art weapons, then surely people should realize that Western countries who put up with this, i.e. all of them, up to this point, have no interest in democracy, they have no interest in freedom, they have no interest in morality, they have no interest in doing what's right, no interest in defending human rights, none of it. It's all garbage, it's all baloney and bollocks to sell the image of self-righteousness while doing uh, what they do in the background and even in the public arena in terms of the weapons they sell. Now, if you look, what would be happening now if Iran was alleged to have done the same to a dissident Iranian journalist? There would be meetings of the United Nations Security Council there would be global condemnation and talk of um, military intervention. There would be massive increases, even beyond the present ones, of sanctions against Iran. And it would be non-stop 
24-7 on the news channels, in the newspapers, demonization of Iran. And if they'd have done that to a dissident journalist, and I'm not saying Iran's perfect, my God, it's far from that. Blimey. But let's at least judge behavior on the basis of behavior and not on the basis of whether a tyranny is an ally or an enemy. And that's the situation. This is, this is the world we live in. Not judging countries and leaders by behavior, but judging them by whether they're on our side or not and whether what they're doing suits us or not. And this is the mentality that runs the world. All the election campaigns, all the promises, all the, oh, we must do the right thing. It's all nonsense. It's all trash. The leaders that come to power, overwhelmingly, not necessarily every last one, but the leaders that come to power are basically psychopaths. Because only psychopaths would run Saudi Arabia as, the, as, as Saudi Arabia is run. Only psychopaths in the West would look on and sell that weapons. And only psychopaths would be looking at a way to smooth over what appears to be, unless a miracle happens, the cold-blooded murder, if the tape is true in the most grotesque way, of a dissident journalist. And you know, journalists in the mainstream should start, start to, to get their bloody asses in gear. Because they cheer when the mainstream, uh, in the mainstream media, when there are censorship uh, regulations and censorship moves against the alternative media. Oh, yeah, fake news, fake news. Crikey, look in the mirror. But these mainstream journalists, well, I was going to say can't be that stupid. Some of them can. To realize that it's the alternative media now and it's them tomorrow. Already, the mainstream media is massively censored. There's lines that they know they can't cross, so they don't even try to. So that's self-censorship, the worst kind of censorship. But the idea is to create a world in which only the official narrative and nothing else is ever heard. And that's why the censorship's getting deeper and deeper and deeper um, and more severe and extreme because they're moving towards that point where only the official narrative will exist. And that includes any questioning of it, even in the mainstream media. That's what's coming. Indeed, you can already see it coming. And, you know, when you look at things from this perspective and you realize the psychopathic nature of what you're dealing with, it may seem to be a bad thing for Saudi Arabia in terms of what's happened to Khashoggi. But if you look deeper in the rabbit hole from their perspective, it could well be exactly what they wanted. Because what does it say? Look what happens to you if you take us on. Look what happens to you if you um, exposers or questioners. This is the mentality of this Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. So if you don't want the same as Khashoggi, then better keep quiet. That's the big message that comes out of this for people challenging not only Saudi Arabia, but the, the system and the networks of which they are apart because in my last book um, everything you need to know but have never been told I um, I quote uh, a dissident Saudi prince from the Saudi royal family who got so sick of their behavior he, he, he left you think he lives in Germany now and he was saying that 
Mohammed bin Salman was manipulated into the position of crown prince, which allows him now to run Saudi Arabia alongside this puppet king. He was manipulated into that position by the United States and by Israel. And of course, there was a price for that. The United States and Israel doesn't manipulate a Saudi prince um, into that level of power unless there's something in it for them, i.e. we'll put you in power, but then you do what we say. And so there's so many levels to what is going on at the moment. And uh, we must not allow these psychopaths in the West to concoct a ludicrous cover story for the psychopaths of Saudi Arabia. Because the 15 men who turned up at the consulate that day from Saudi Arabia and then got the hell out of it included people close to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. So any cover story is a cover up and we should not stand for it.